The Canon M50 has been the best selling camera with interchangeable lenses since its release in spring of 2018. With the new Canon M50 Mark II, what are you getting for $50 more? And is it worth upgrading if you currently have the first M50? We'll be breaking it down all in this video. Let's go. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar Takori with Think Media, helping you build your influence with online video. And on this channel, sometimes we do YouTube strategy videos as well as tech gear reviews and camera comparisons just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. All right, so I am super excited to get into this video, but if you're pumped for this video from us, smash that like button if you wanna let me know. Thanks, my, my wife just put her thumbs up. I appreciate that like, babe. Uh, nonetheless, uh, the Canon M50 Mark II is going to retail at $699 to include the kit lens. Um, that's just $50 more if you were gonna buy the Canon M50 Mark I brand new. And so that's just something to note. Um, which obviously that's not a big difference. And so if you don't have the Canon M50, maybe you just go for the Mark II because it's just $50 more. Now, because the M50 Mark I is older and now has a new version out, you can totally shop used and refurbished. And we'll put links down in the description below, but you can get this camera refurbished for like 480 on Canon's website or get everything you need for about 500 bucks on eBay. Uh, nonetheless, getting this used is now a, a pretty good deal. And I know a lot of people, you know, are at 500 bucks in regards to their investment to their first camera uh, or camera for YouTube. So Canon actually sent us two uh, M50 Mark IIs and we've been using it for a couple weeks now. Uh, this is the white version um, that I have right here and I'm actually using the black M50 Mark II to film this talking head portion right now. Um, and I think, I mean, obviously it looks really good, but uh, I'm just gonna be straight up right off the bat. We made a, a video previously a couple months back on some of like the uh, rumors and projections on what some of the things the Mark II would have. And you know, a lot of people maybe are a little disappointed because in reality, you're not gonna get too much of a performance difference out of the M50 Mark II in comparison to the first one. You're also not gonna see any physical differences. It literally is the exact same camera, exact same button layouts, you know, nothing's different physically on the camera. So as far as uh, what it can produce and uh, its physical appearance, there is not really anything different. Now where the M50 Mark II probably shines more than the previous one is in live streaming. And I'm going to get into that in just a second. Uh, however, I know this video can be a easily negative video and that's just gonna be an easy thing to do. And I didn't wanna do that. I really wanted to give like an honest opinion based off of where you are. If you currently have the current, the first M50, cause we love the M50 here at Think Media. And if this is something you should either upgrade to or get brand new, if you want to get into shooting with an M50. So with both cameras, you're gonna get the same resolution and frame rates. You're gonna get, you know, full HD 1080 with 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. And then you're also gonna get a 4K option, but again, limiting in the sense that it only does 4K at 24 frames per second, and that there is a huge crop in when you hop into 4K. You also, again, lose the dual pixel autofocus when you hop into 4K, and it becomes a contrast-based focus uh, kind of system, which, I don't think is reliable. Just something to think about when picking up this camera. Still not a reliable 4K camera in my opinion. You're still gonna get 24 megapixels for photography with the Mark II, um, same as Mark I. I actually used the Mark II recently to do a little mini photo shoot for my daughter uh, and her two year birthday. And the photos came out really nice. I love coupling the M50 with the Viltrox adapter and then the Canon 50 millimeter. It's kind of a life hack way of making the Canon a full frame a photo camera, or if you're shooting in 1080 without that 4K crop, it also makes it kind of full frame. Uh, super cool little setup. We'll put links to that in the description below if you wanna check it out. So although the Canon M50 Mark II is just about 99% similar to the Canon M50 Mark I, what are you getting for $50 more when buying it brand new? Um, I think the, the first thing is to say is you're gonna get a little bit of a newer user experience. Uh, you know, if you're a vlogger or if you're a solo creator, uh, they've thrown the record button on the screen now so you can start and stop recording with the screen facing you. Uh, they also added some more kind of like friendly, beginner friendly options when shooting video, like defocus mode and other things like that. Nothing I would think of it too crazy, but you know, 
that's what you're getting for $50 more. And I think the biggest thing you're getting is kind of live streaming capabilities. Now, uh, probably the biggest flaw uh, with the Canon M50, which came around after the fact because nobody knew that, you know, the world's gonna shut down and we'll be having to live stream more, do web conferences and things like that, is that the Canon M50 doesn't have a clean HDMI, the first version. Uh, what they did include is a clean HDMI now in the M50 Mark II, which is really nice. So, you know, if you don't have either camera and you do want an M50, because it's still a great camera, if you want an M50, how it works, the way it looks, like what you see now, then by all means, now it's a great camera to live stream with. However, it is weird because, you know, if you invested in, you know, a long enough USB cord and you have a PC desktop or laptop computer, you can download the EOS webcam software and just, and use the first M50 with a USB, uh, which is nice, but you, you do get better quality out of a camera when you are HDMI out uh, versus USB. And that's just the reality of HDMI versus USB. But when you do use the HDMI on the M50 Mark, one, you're gonna get all your data on the screen. You can't use autofocus and things like that. And so that's kind of just where the M50 Mark II shines the most in comparison to the first one. So I think if you have neither, uh, that's definitely worth you know looking at in regards to if you should get the Mark II or the Mark I. Canon has been a little slow when it comes to working with uh, Mac users when it comes to their EOS webcam utility software. So having that HDMI option is great. Uh, and I would encourage uh, whatever camera you have, you might want to use an HDMI to use it to live stream or do Zoom calls with, and it's super easy. All you need is an HDMI cord that goes from your camera to a capture card. And we love this super uh, inexpensive capture card. It's, it's like 20 bucks from Amazon. Again, we'll post links to everything we're mentioning down in the description below so you can check it out. Another difference with the Mark II is that in video and in photo mode, you have eye detection. Uh, I don't know, you know, I, I didn't pixel peep or anything. I don't know if it's, it's, if it's just eye detection or is it eye autofocus? I think there's a difference. Like is the camera locking in in my eye or is the camera just, you know, identifying that there's an eye in the image? I, I think there could be a difference because there's still the face box. Uh, when using a uh, Sony camera, all you see is the eye. So, you know, you, I feel like you know better if, you know, the eye is in focus. The next feature we haven't quite tested, but Canon said we'll have the ability to, is to be able to wirelessly live stream directly to YouTube using your Canon M50. They even also said uh, and told us that you'll be able to connect a microphone. So if you had a wire, potentially, if you had a wireless lab connected to the camera and if someone followed you around somewhere with the same Wi-Fi, that you'd be able to wirelessly stream. I mean, I, I can only think of a few different scenarios where this might be worth it. I mean, maybe you're a real estate agent and you're doing like a home tour or an office tour or things like that. Um, but, or maybe a live stream vlog around your house, but you never want to leave your Wi-Fi. but we haven't tested it. Uh, and you obviously need to pass all those YouTube thresholds, you know, a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours and things like that. So, I mean, like a feature that's not really available to absolutely everyone who buys this camera, um, but something that could be cool, um, but also kind of niche. But I wanna pass the question off to you. What do you think about the Canon M50 Mark II in comparison to the Mark I? Um, what do you think about the price point of just being $50 more? I think if I could be honest, I think Canon was just trying to keep the camera in the same price point. Um, so if you still have the Canon M50, I wouldn't you know, be bummed about the Mark II, which is nice. A lot of times if you have a camera and the new one comes out, you're like, dang it, man. I, I, all I had to do was spend a couple hundred or more dollars. I don't think you're gonna have that issue, which is fine because this has been the best selling camera uh, for quite some time. And so I think uh, the $700 price point is pretty great for a beginner camera, such a great camera for YouTube. I mean, like talking head video, you know, now with live streaming and things like that, I think it's super cool. Uh, but let me know down in the comments below what you think. I'd love to start a conversation. Uh, but all in all, uh, the M50 period is still a great camera for YouTube. Nothing has changed. Like uh, most people need just 1080 video. Uh, most people need that reliable dual pixel autofocus. Most people need 
great colors coming out of the camera, straight out of the camera without having to color grade. And so that's where the M50 really shines. With the Mark II on the market, I think more or less, if you were gonna buy an M50 and you currently don't have one, then obviously getting the Mark II would be the wise choice at just $50 more. But also, if you were looking at an M50, now you can get it for a lot cheaper, you know, if you wanna get it used uh, or refurbished or something like that. And so, all in all, still an awesome camera. I would say if you wanted a, like, a legit upgrade, a performance upgrade, a physical upgrade to the Canon M50, I would point your attention to the M6 Mark II. The M6 Mark II is a phenomenal uh, Canon uh, mirrorless camera. It has 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second with no crop with eye autofocus, uh, has uh, more megapixels. So for photography, you're getting uh, a lot more crispier of an image. Um, but the M6 Mark II with the kit lens, it's gonna cost you around $1,099 before taxes. Um, you could buy just the body for around $850, uh, which is super cool. Uh, and then you can just, just buy the lens you think you need. Uh, right now, I am actually using the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 lens, an awesome lens for the Canon EFM mount. Um, but if you're in the price range of around $700 and you would like to look at another alternative, I would point your attention to the Sony ZV-1. Not an interchangeable lens camera, but we did do a video comparison on it and you can click or tap the screen, check out that video, or you can check out a video we did on the M6 Mark II. And I can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.